Hello, I am Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This video series is tied to the course Intermediate Thermodynamics, and in this lesson we'll be looking at a terminology review. Our goal for this lesson is that you should have the vocabulary necessary to read and to discuss thermodynamics with your peers and with me, your instructor. So let's first look at some important variables. This list here is not fully inclusive, but these are the key ones to get us going. We will be using pressure, temperature, and volume to describe states of our processes. P and T for pressure and temperature are very common. We'll use a capital V for the extensive volume. The authors of the book use a capital V that's underlined if it's going to be intensive on a per mole basis. And they'll use a capital V with a carrot or a hat on the head um, when they are indicating it's on a per mass basis. I will sometimes use this notation, but I tend to fall back into my old habit of using lowercase to indicate intensive and mass or mole, you'll have to decide from context. We're going to use internal energy U, kinetic energy, either E sub K or just a KE slammed next to each other, and potential energy E sub P or PE to represent our total energy. And then the other forms of energy transfer that we're dealing with are heat, Q, and work, W. We also need to discuss systems and processes. A system is going to be something that I just simply define what's in, what's out. If I can clearly identify for any particular location, material, whether or not it's in the system or out of the system, then I've done an adequate job of defining a system. Now these systems can be open or closed. Open or closed is about what happens to the mass. Energy can go in or out. Open and closed does not indicate anything going on with energy. It indicates what's happening with the mass. So a closed system cannot allow mass to enter or leave. Whatever's in the system stays in the system. An open system is one where the mass can transfer in and out. An isolated system <clears throat> is closed for mass, but it's also closed for energy transfer. This is a little bit related to an adiabatic system where we're going to not allow heat transfer in or out of our system. But this goes beyond that. There is no exchange of energy, no exchange of mass. Now, a different drawing was a little bit more useful for looking at an adiabatic system. So again, isolated systems, all mass and energy, they're not impermeable to work or to mass, or energy or to mass. Closed systems can allow energy in or out, but mass has to stay on one side of the border or the other. And an open system, both mass and energy can come and go. But in an adiabatic system, I can have work happening across the border, but there's no heat transfer. We frequently use a euphemism that the system is well insulated to be synonymous with an adiabatic system. So let's talk next about processes. So a system has material in it and at a particular point in time there are properties that define that system in its state. But if I allow things to change that process of changing is what we will call a thermodynamic process. In the diagram here, I've got several different key types of processes that you should be familiar with. An isobaric process is one where the pressure is held constant. In an isothermal process, temperature is held constant. In an isochoric process, volume is held constant. And again, we have the adiabatic process 
where there's no heat transferred in or out. So these are all simple processes and they may or may not be steady state. A steady state process simply means that the process is changing maybe across a space but not with time. Steady state always indicates that I have no change over time. Cycles are a series of processes. They may be steady state, they may be transient. But what's special about a cycle is that as I change the state for from one state to the next, eventually the material in my system comes back to the original state. So as you go through process one to two, two to three, three to four, eventually four to one brings me back to my original state. And that's all that's required to be a cycle. So next let's talk about equilibrium. Equilibrium can be either stable or unstable or possibly metastable. Stable is always well understood. Stable is things aren't changing anymore and it's unreasonable to expect them to change. This little ball here isn't likely to start rolling uphill or that hill no matter how much you would say blow on it or whatever. This box oriented this way is not likely to tip over. Unstable equilibrium is, you know, those little magic moments where you can get that marble to balance on the top of this hill. But the least little movement, a tiny breeze, is going to force it to start rolling down one way or the other. We've seen people who can balance amazing things on one teeny tiny well-selected point. But again, the least little force on one side or the other is going to cause it to tip over. That's an unstable equilibrium point. But sometimes we're tricked by these metastable points. Metastable points like this one here, it looks like it's pretty stable and you know a teeny tiny little push isn't going to do much. But if you force it along this direction, if you push a, you know, with a, your finger or you blow with a strong wind, if it moves enough, it's not going to come back to this point. It's going to go all the way down. Here, again, it's fairly stable. But with enough force, we're going to be able to eventually topple this box over. So that's a metastable position. We also have mechanical and thermal equilibrium to discuss. Mechanical, therm e mechanical equilibrium is when you have all of your forces in balance. So usually the force we're talking about in thermodynamics problems is pressure. So our pressures are going to be balanced, not changing. That's going to be mechanical equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium means my temperatures are balanced, not changing. If you have a temperature gradient, you have heat transfer. The heat will continue to transfer until all of the temperatures are at thermal equilibrium. In this case, if I have the same mass of something at 0 degrees and 100 degrees, they will come to thermal equilibrium at 50 degrees C. At that point, I will not expect any more temperature changes to happen. These are our core understandings of equilibrium that we will be dealing with. In our next videos, we're going to be looking at what happens uh, or what people have observed over the years. And this will become the background to the first and second law. Again, in this course, we're doing a very quick review. If you need additional help, there are other video lessons that I can give you links to. And be sure to take the time to review and make sure you really understand these basic concepts. Thank you.